In this video, we are going to be making a podcast Notion dashboard from scratch. This is perfect if you're a podcaster, obviously, but also if you're someone who is learning Notion and trying to develop their skills, following along, you will learn a lot of things to do with Notion and how it operates and how to create a functional dashboard. Okay, so here's what we're going to try and make in this video. So to start with, let's start with a schedule, nice and easy. We're going to do forward slash DA and select table view here, which is a type of database. Now here we're going to create a new database. Let's just call it podcast schedule, hit new database. All right, so we're going to want to view this as most likely a month view. So we're going to click here on calendar and then let's make this full screen by clicking on the three dots doing full width. So we have the podcast schedule here. Now what are things that we'll want to see in here? We'll want to see the actual episodes. So let's just say this is a podcast where the episodes come out on a Wednesday. So let's call this episode or interview with John. So we're interviewing John here. Now what what do we want to see from a grand overview? When we look at this, what pieces of, of information do we want to know before even clicking on interview with John? Well, we'll probably want to know if it's been recorded, edited, and where along in the production line it is. So what we're going to do here is change this tags, rename that to production. So we could have it as prepped, recorded, edited, scheduled. And then we might want schedule to be green, edited to be orange, recorded to be blue, and prepped to be gray. Something like that makes sense to me. So now we want to be able to see that here. So what we're going to do is go to these three dots. Then we're going to click on properties. And then here you can see production. We're going to click on this eyeball here. And now you can see this is showing. Now, because I've done a multi-select, all of these are coming up. So we're going to change this property, edit property, and change it from multi-select to just a single select. So now we can see it's prepped or we could change it to recorded and it will change here very easy to do and it works really well so now we can see interview with john has it been edited where along in the production line is it cool so let's scroll down what i'm going to do is actually turn this into a to-do list now we have schedule we can tick that off another thing here is sponsors so how are we going to do sponsors well to make it easy for ourselves we want to know which sponsor is associated with each episode. Now the best way to do this is actually to do a separate database. And that database is then going to link into this database. Now I realize calling it podcast schedule might be confusing. So what we're going to do is scroll down and let's create a new database and we're going to call it sponsors. So let's do database, table view. I'm going to call it podcast sponsors. Click on new database. All right, so here we have podcast sponsors. What are the things we want to know? We want to know the business name, or let's just call that sponsor. We want to know how much they're going to pay us. So we'll put that there. And you might want to change the currency for this. So to do that, click on, just click on it, then click on edit property. Then we're going to change number format and we want it to be a dollar or whatever, euro, pound or whatever. So now if you type 20, as you can see, it comes up with $20. Now, another thing we're going to want to know is the ad read. Now, that will probably make sense to have in here. So inside the sponsor, we're going to have an ad read. And we can put that here. Let's just say Notion is the sponsor. Hint, hint, Notion, if you're watching this, feel free to hit me up. I might delete this column here. And then we might want to have a separate column, which is simply a link to our actual sponsored segment so they can view that. So I'll just call this sponsor clip. So here you might link to Frame.io or another program where you can show the sponsor the actual clip so they can see it and approve it. Speaking of, if they are approving it, we need to know where along in the process we are of getting it approved. So we'll click that, click on select, and let's call this sponsor process. Now in here we might have something like, has it been written? Has it been recorded? Has it been edited? Has it been approved? And then again, we'll change this, maybe do approved, edited, Cool. So the ad read we'll put in here and we can start writing that here. Hello. Ocean is really good. We can write that here for us and we can put all of these basic details in this database here. Now what I want to see is this database actually show up here. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's click on interview with John and let's say this episode is actually sponsored and here add a property and what we want to do is actually do a relation. 
So Relation is basically now just going to connect it to another database. So we want to connect it to podcast sponsors, which is already showing up here for me. So I'll just click on that. And then we can even have it show up on podcast sponsors. So we'll tick that in as well. And we want to make sure there is no limit. We can have unlimited amount of sponsors because you might have multiple sponsors in one episode. So then I'll do add relation. Now, as you can see, podcast sponsors shows up here. So now if I click here, I'll see Notion, click on that. And now it is sponsored by Notion. Now the problem is once again, it is not showing up here. So in order for that to happen, we're going to click on these three dots. We're going to click on properties and we can see here podcast sponsors, the eyeball needs to be clicked in and now we can see Notion. Cool, so now we have a schedule. We also have a way to track sponsors. So I'm going to tick that in. Now, the next one is ideas for podcast episodes. For my YouTube channel, for example, I'm constantly writing down ideas. You know, I probably have between 100 and 200 video ideas. So I'm sure it's the same for podcasts. I don't have a podcast or anything, but I'm sure it's the same. So to do that, what we actually want is to make it easy for ourselves. The podcast schedule, we can actually use the same database. And if it doesn't have a date associated with it, then we won't be seeing it in here. We'll just see it in a list format. I'll just show you what I mean so that makes sense. We're going to do forward slash database. But now instead of creating a new one, we're actually going to select the existing one. So we're going to select here podcast schedule. And then we might just do copy existing view. Don't worry, we're going to change this view. So now you can see we're actually seeing podcast schedule twice here. But the thing is we don't want to see this as a calendar. So we're going to go to these three dots. We're going to click on layout and then we're going to change it instead of a calendar to a table view. You could do a gallery, you could do a bunch of things, but a table view is probably the easiest thing to do. Here, as you can see, we have a date column. Now, this is the crucial part to make this work. The reason we have a date is because we have a calendar. A database doesn't need a date column, but if we have a calendar view, then we do need a date column. But obviously to show up in a calendar, it needs a date associated with it. So what we're going to do here is make a rule. We're going to click on filter and we're going to click on add advanced filter. And basically the rule will be very, very simple. When the start date is, and we're going to change this to empty. Now, as you can see, the episode with John has been removed here. So we scroll up, it's still here, but it's just not showing up here because of that filter where the date is empty. Now, as you can see, I have three blank items in here, so I'll just delete them. So now in hindsight, podcast schedule might not make sense. So we might want to change it to podcast episodes. We can do that up here. Or what we can do is instead just hide this. So we might click on the three dots, click on layout, show database title, and turn that off. So now when I have an idea, oh, I should interview the Notion CEO. Cool, I can put that in here. And then we can still track the production. Has it been prepped? Has it been recorded, edited, blah, blah, blah. And all of that can be added in here. We could still put in, do we want a sponsor associated with it? So we could still use these functions here. And most likely you'll probably be jotting down ideas here. It would be cool to ask about Notion stuff. So you can put in all of your notes and stuff and this list can become quite long. Okay, cool. Now we can tick off the third item, ideas for podcast episodes. Now the fourth point is the guest intro. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're all efficient here and we want to be as streamlined as possible. So maybe we can utilize the power of AI. So let's open up this interview with Notion CEO. And let's say I want to have an intro for this. Well, instead of me doing research and spending a lot of time on this, we can use the power of AI to do it. So Notion AI could probably be used in this case to do a really fantastic guest intro. So let's just do double space. And then here you can see this pops up for me to start writing. Write a podcast intro for my guest who is the CEO of Notion. I want to introduce them and explain what their role is and what the Notion company does to provide some context for the start of the episode. I'll click on center AI and it writes it super, super quickly, and it's just amazing. Welcome to the podcast. In today's episode, we have a special guest joining us, the CEO of Notion. As the CEO, they play a crucial role in leading and shaping the direction of Notion, a company that has revolutionized the way we organize and collaborate. Notion is a powerful, all-in-one workspace that allows individuals and teams to create, collaborate, and organize their work seamlessly. With its intuitive interface and flexible features, Notion has become a go-to tool for professionals, students, and creatives worldwide. In this episode, we'll dive deep into the world of Notion, a 
exploring its origins, its mission, its innovative solutions, its offers to enhance productivity and efficiency. Our guests will share insights and challenges and triumphs they've experienced whilst overseeing the growth of Notion, as well as their vision for the future of the company. So further ado, let's jump into the conversation and learn from the CEO of Notion themselves. Get ready for an inspiring and informative episode. Now, as you can see, this is a absolutely fantastic guest intro, and it took me two seconds to make with the power of AI. So now we can tick off guest intro by using the power of AI. If you don't have Notion Pro, I recommend signing up to it. It is absolutely fantastic. It saved me many, many times with the backup feature that it has. It's fantastic and it's well worth the money, so I recommend it. Link in the description, by the way, so they know that I've sent you over. Now, for the next part, we have questions in each episode. Now, obviously, we can also use AI for this. I could ask it to come up with what are some good questions to ask the Notion CEO. But for the sake of not showcasing the same feature twice, let's come up with a different solution. So let's look at uh, the interview with John. What we might want to do is come up with a theme first for the episode. So instead of just it being an interview with John and asking John kind of generic questions, maybe we want to form an actual premise and um, specific topic for this episode to be about. So first we might want to start by writing down a few topics. After we have topics, topic A, topic B, topic C, Then we might narrow it down and say, you know what, topic B is the one that I really want to talk about. I think this one can be fully fleshed out. Then we might want to start writing some questions down, blah, blah, blah. We're going to open up a sub page inside of this page and we're going to call it John's questions. Now we'll copy and paste these and just take the ones we like. So let's say I don't like blah, blah, but I like blah, blah, blah and blah. Then I'll just drag them into here. And then here, what I can do is when I open up this, I can just share John this page. So then John will just have access to this page by clicking share. So I can either share it here or click on publish, click on publish to web and then share him the link. That way he can see the questions in advance. This can be really, really useful depending on your work style, depending on how your podcast works. Cool. Let's scroll down. Now we can see we have questions in each episode. Tick. Now a launch checklist. This will most likely be the same for every single podcast. So. Depending on the episode, it doesn't really matter. It's just a launch checklist. So how are we going to do this to make this efficient? Well, it's probably ideal to make a template. So I'll go up here, click on this down arrow and click on new template. I'll call this new episode. And what we'll do is actually have this as the standard template that gets used every time we click on new episode. So this will always come up. So what are the different things that we'll want for every single episode? We might want to have the topics. We might want to have the questions as before. So I don't know what's involved with a launch checklist for podcasts, but I'll do forward slash to do list. First thing is have the guest sign off on the episode. Ensure sponsors are happy with it. Create podcast episode cover. Create marketing assets for upload. Send guest cover to post on their socials. Cool, let's say this is the launch checklist. So what we've done is put it as part of a template. So I'll click away or first, you know what? I might just add a little icon, there we go. Now I'll click away. And now what we wanna do is make sure that this is the standard template that always gets used. So we're going to go up here, click on the down arrow and our new episode, as you can see, empty is currently the default. You might want to keep it as that. I'll actually just show you what happens. If you then click on plus, you can see new episode comes up here. So if you want to then utilize that, you just click on it. And now all of a sudden this loads in, as you can see, loads in, or I'll just delete that. What you could do is set this as the default, click on that, click on set as default for all views in podcast schedule. And now when you click on plus, as you can see, the new episode template automatically gets loaded in. So they're kind of the two ways to operate. Really, it's a preference thing for you, whatever you prefer working with. I will delete that. Scroll down and we can see launch checklist is complete. Well done. Okay, now the marketing assets. So our marketing assets might be stuff like uh, templates for social media, uh, templates for podcast covers, uh, stuff like that. So instead of us having to search for that or have it on folders on our computer, everyone knows folders are old school. Come on, we need to grow up and get with the times and use databases instead of folders. So we're going to do forward slash database, the classic. We've done this multiple times now and then select table view. And now here we're going to create a new database and let's call it marketing assets. So click on new database. Now we won't want to see this as a list. 
Assets are probably going to be visual, meaning we want to probably see this as a gallery. So we'll go to the three dots, we're going to click on layout, and then here we are going to click on gallery. Now, as you can see, these are all quite large. So what we might want to do is change the card size from medium to small. Let's just delete two of them so we don't have some untitled ones. Click here and let's call this Insta Story Template. Now what you can do is upload that template story straight into here. That way you always have it for access to download. So if you're traveling, if you're working on another computer, it doesn't matter, you have it here. Again, if these are heavy files, you most likely would want Notion Pro, highly recommend it. That way you can upload really, really heavy files like your Photoshop files and stuff like that. Or if you're working with Canva, then you could maybe just link it straight to Canva. So then we could change this tag to edit property, change it from a multi-select to a link, change it from tags to Canva link. And then here you could put the Canva link to the template that you've made in Canva. So that would also work very well. If not, drag and drop the assets straight in here for you to download. This is also fantastic if you're outsourcing and you need everyone to have access to all of the assets by putting them all in a database so everyone can utilize them. So Insta Story, like I said, you can have the cover, all of these different things that people might need slash you might need at any point. If you have them all in a single gallery, it will be super, super helpful. All right, let's tick that off. Last thing is the production line. Now the production line, what we want to do is basically see all of these episodes that are, you know, ideas and stuff like that, this viewed as an actual line. So you might be thinking of Trello boards or something like that, where basically it's four columns and we can drag and drop them from one column to the next. So instead of creating a new database and taking up even more space on this page, we're actually just going to create another view in this table. So what we'll do is actually drag this and let's have this above the sponsors. So you just use the six dots there. Now we can see this is the table view. So I'm going to rename this to list. Now, because I'm lazy, I wanna make this as easy as possible for myself. So instead of clicking the plus and then having to do a bunch of settings, let's just do right click and duplicate. Now you can see it comes up with the list and then brackets one. So we're going to change this to production line. Then we might wanna change this little icon. Let's just do an arrow. Now, as you can see, it is still a list. So we're going to make sure we're on the production line one. Click on the three dots, click on layout. And now here, we're going to change it to a board view. So here, as you can see, we have edited, prepped, recorded, scheduled, and no production. So no production just means that it hasn't actually been assigned anything just yet. Now, the reason for this is this is just in my ideas. So what we'll do is have that no production isn't seen, and we'll make sure that we do actually see the ones that are edited. So why aren't we seeing this episode in here? Well, it's because we duplicated this view. So what happened is when we duplicated it, we actually copied the filter associated with it. So we're just going to want to first remove this filter. So click delete filter. And now you can see edited interview with John is coming up in here. Now we want to ensure that no production isn't coming up. So we're going to click on the three dots. We're going to click on group. And then here you can see no production. This eyeball here, we're going to click and turn that off. Now we can see edited, prepped, recorded, scheduled. Now this is a bit weird to have it in this order. Edited is coming before prepped. Now this might be happening to you. So what we're going to do is go back to these three dots, click on group, and now here we can actually move again by using these six dots. Six dots in Doshans signifies that you can move something. So we're going to move that from prepped and then move recorded here. So now we have prepped, recorded, edited, scheduled. It's in the right order gonna give this a little icon so now we have a production line here working very well so now if I want I can just drag these here drag these here and it works really really seamlessly so if you're looking for a to-do list as well and you want to manage other projects I recommend checking out my headquarters template it is my second brain template that I've developed and if you like notion and you've gotten this far I think you would really love it